This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Hello my goblins and ghouls, my name is Steven. Today we are attempting to defeat an old enemy, vacuum sensors. If you remember a few episodes ago, I tried, I attempted, I gave it my best shot to try and make analog sensing circuitry stuff working for the vacuum sensors. I kind of swore off it, which was dumb because it's cool. I just didn't know what the heck I was doing. And I still kind of don't, but it's important that we get vacuum sensing on the motherboard for this pick and place. A lot of pick and place builds rely on knowing whether or not there's a part on the tip based on the vacuum pressure. If it's sealed up, the pressure's pressure. If there isn't a part on the tip, you can tell that there isn't just based on the pressure. On the most recent motherboard build, there actually is a footprint for a vacuum sensor. I kind of punted on doing all the measurement circuitry myself and just got a big monolithic one that handles all of the processing inside the chip, but it's like 35 bucks a popper, like totally not gonna work. So we made another one. <laughs> Oof. Now, honestly, there isn't too much different between these two. They're doing pretty much the same thing. They have the exact same microcontroller. The big update here is that we have all new circuitry for the vacuum sensors. In that previous episode, we used this little guy, which I put onto a breakout. And this is the two, what is it? Two, two SMPP03 vacuum sensor. It's pretty much just a Wheatstone bridge. So hopefully all the circuitry that's on this board is gonna make this thing give us a nice clean signal. I used the open source schematics from Programmable Air, a really cool Arduino based like pneumatics project. So hopefully this is gonna be the last version or at the very least the schematic will not change. I may make some of the footprints not all be through hole but also surface mount so the whole thing can be pick and placed. A lot of this is the same. So I'm just gonna fly through spinning up the main microcontroller stuff. I'm pretty sure it's gonna work. And then we'll get to the goodies of actually testing out the vacuum sensor and see what we get. It's gonna be good. I'm anxious, I'm not gonna lie, but I have high hopes. I have high hopes, mainly because I didn't design the circuit. <laughs> but I think it'll work. I trust the developers of Programmable Air. All spun up. Well, mostly. All the power stuff, the USB hub, just like normal, it all works just fine. I can get a little blinky sketch on there and I can even squeeze Marlin onto it right out of the gate. So we're looking good. So now that we got all that squared away, it's time to put all the vacuum sensing stuff on here. I have two vacuum ports. I'm only gonna do one just to test this out, but I'm gonna populate it and we'll see what we get. What's going on in the whole circuit around this is two op amps and then there's an instrumentation amplifier. One op amp is being used as a constant current source to go through the vacuum sensor itself. The output of that then goes into the instrumentation amplifier and it kind of gives you an output based on the differential. And then that signal then goes into another op amp, which then poops out a signal, hopefully, to the microcontroller. So I can just throw some goofy firmware on the microcontroller to read in whatever the analog value is coming in on the pin connected to the vacuum sensor, but actually getting that integrated to Marlin is no small feat. Marlin does not have any analog read functionality baked into it out of the gate. Apparently the analog read function in Arduino is incredibly time consuming 
and really doesn't work out for like a real time motor control application. So we might have to get cheeky with how this actually works, finding some creative way to implement it or just only deciding to check this when there's no motors moving or we'll have to see. But in the meantime, I just wanna make sure that all the actual analog stuff works okay. Plus with this board, do you see that little LED down there at the bottom? That tells you when the STM32 is trying to talk over the USB hub back to the computer. So you can see when it's actually trying to transfer data, which is pretty sweet. Oh, I can't wait to get all the parts on it. It's gonna look so good, totally populated. But first we gotta check the analog stuff. We gotta check the vacuum sensor. I really hope it works. Let's see. This is the big important improvement here that hopefully will allow me to do this whole vacuum sensor signal receiving thing right. The chips in this little strip are instrumentation amplifiers. I tried to make one of these from scratch just using discrete op amps last time and it didn't go so well, but this is tuned to take in two separate lines that will vary back and forth just a little bit differential and amplify that out. That's what I was having a hard time getting to work. And this chip should kind of handle all that for me just in the silicon inside of it. When in doubt, buy an ASIC. <laughs> if you can't do it discrete, just buy an ASIC that does it for you. And then try and do the discrete stuff later because it's still fun. Okay, so I've soldered up all the components for the vacuum sensing. I'm about to plug it in. I have a tube connected to the sensor itself and I don't have any firmware on the microcontroller yet to listen in to what the sensor is barfing out. Instead, I just have it hooked up to my scope so I should be able to see an analog voltage change. Yeah, <laughs> here we go. Okay, I just saw the scope jumped up. That was good and nothing is hot. So I'm gonna try and suck on this tube and see what happens. <gasps> we got it. It finally works. Oh, I can blow on it too. The relief pumping through my veins right now. Interesting, okay. So it's like, I pretty much have a volt up and a volt down. I might be able to just change some resistor values for this one. So my ADC range is zero to 3.3 volts. So I'm already really at the high range of that. So I'd like to bring that voltage down. I'm sure this is just a resistor value change somewhere. I need to check the schematic. But it works, it freaking works. Okay, I think I'm starting to get a hang of this whole op amp thing. So I looked at the schematic and I was pretty sure I had to change a specific resistor value to try and bring the center point down a little bit so I could see a longer stroke, get the entire bit of the signal within the zero to 3.3 volt range of my ADC. And sure enough, it did it. So now I have the whole range of pressure that at least that I can pull with just my mouth. <laughs> this is like 670 millivolts to like 3.1 volts. Yeah, I mean, that's it. That works. That's, I can get a beautiful analog signal out of this. So next, I'm gonna get all the other normal motherboard stuff on here, all the stepper motor drivers, all the MOSFETs, all that jazz. Then I'll throw some firmware on here that will be able to tell if a part is stuck on the nozzle based on the pressure, just as a proof of concept. Rolling it into Marlin's gonna be more of a thing, but this will show it's possible with the hardware. Oh my God. My relief is unbounded.
baby okay <laughs> we got pressure detection baby oh yeah check it out I just hooked it up to an LED on the motherboard and it sees enough of a vacuum that's actually getting pulled through the tubing because there's something covering over the tip of the nozzle it goes over a threshold and the board knows that it has a part picked Oh, so all I did here was put some tubing on the vacuum sensor on the motherboard. This goes out to actually just a little 3D printed manifold, which works surprisingly well. Just press fit tubing into these holes that have a very slight taper to them. Then this tube goes off to the pump to actually pull the pressure. And then this one goes off to the whole like stepper motor rotation assembly. So I can just put my thumb over this and it pulls a vacuum in this whole pneumatic system and it can detect the pressure change and lights on up the LED. Well, there it is. Motherboard, vacuum sensing, picking parts. I think it's done. I think this motherboard is about where it needs to be to facilitate everything I want it to do. From here, it is software tweaks and like maybe another board revision for like little quality of life improvements, like making it all surface mount. But it's pretty much doing what I want. So freaking cool. I've gone ahead and tested all the stepper motor drivers, all the MOSFETs, all the different functionality that it needs, and it's almost completely there. Huge shout out and thank you to Martin for getting Marlin ported on over to this thing. It's really freaking cool. <laughs> it just works. I didn't mention this earlier, but there's also a fair amount of expansion headers on this board. So if you wanna add your own wacky gizmos to this thing, you're more than welcome to. There's stuff to facilitate that. There are two quick connectors, which is SparkFun's I2C, like quick connect interface. Two ports for that, along with two general IDC headers with 10 pins. It has a few GPIOs, SPI, I2C, five volts. So that should be pretty useful for like a display if you want to add it for whatever reason or up to you. Plus there are three RS-45 lines. One is kind of dedicated to the feeders, but the other two, maybe a reflow oven, maybe a hopper. Who knows? But it's open for you to screw around with it if you want to. Oh, wow, it feels so weird to kind of just like be done with this part of it. So what's next? Marlin still needs work. Open PNP still actually needs a little bit of configuration for this. Thank you, Justin. All right, that's it for this one. In the next episode, I'm literally remodeling every mechanical part in this machine, <laughs> but it's for a good reason. I promise you'll see. I have a Patreon, so if you'd like to help support me and projects like this, there's a link in the description where you can become a patron. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. But before I go, I wanna thank this video sponsor, PCBWay. Per usual, PCBWay made the boards for this project and I mean, come on, look at this freaking thing. Mm, it's so nice. <laughs> Their matte black with gold finish comes out beautiful every time. I have gotten matte black with gold finish boards from pretty much every board shop out there and PCB Ways definitely comes out the nicest. They came insanely quickly after I placed the order and at an incredibly good price as well. If you're looking for a place to make your boards, I highly recommend PCB Way. Thank you so much to PCB Way for sponsoring this video. So now, hopefully. Ooh! Mmm. <laughs> uh, isn't she lovely? Words about circuit boards. That's a progression right there, ladies and gentlemen. Let me tell you.